right there. Oh, good. Yeah. Not your kids here. Uh, yeah, Nicholas and Mason. Nicholas and Mason? Yeah. Okay. Sounds My good. daughter's not here, but yeah. Okay. Dan, do you need your water? Um, I'll take I, I can get one. Thank you. At least I'll get you one. Oh, thanks, Bob. Thank you, Lisa.
Good morning. Nice to see all of you and excited to begin a new chapter for a program with a long and unique tradition. As you know, we're here today to introduce the next head coach for men's basketball here at the University of Detroit Mercy. I'm Titans broadcaster Dan Hasty. In a moment, I'll hand things over to Detroit Mercy Athletic Director Robert Vowles so he can help us make this introduction. We're also happy to have University President Donald Taylor here to say a few words. We'll then hear from our next head coach. And after his remarks, we'll be able to have you come up and make him available for questions in front of the banner over to my left and to many of your rights. After that, we'd like to invite fans to come up and have a chance to meet Coach Monty. Then we'd be happy to set up any one-on-one -on -one conversations for any media that would like to have one with Coach this morning. Before we do that, we'd like to welcome Coach's family to the Titan program, Coach's wife, Alex and their two sons, Mason and Nicholas, and their daughter, Charlotte Ann, who may be watching here this morning. We know that you know how big of a life change this can be, so we just want you to know how much we appreciate the changes and the sacrifices that you guys are making as well. We'd also like to thank our Titans fans and supporters for being here today, some of whom played a part in this process and to those watching along our social media channels. And to let you know that shortly after this press conference, we'll bring you an extended one-on-one -on -one conversation with Detroit Mercy's new head coach. And that'll be available on YouTube. Now to the business at hand. And I'm sure Robert will go into this more in depth momentarily. But I know I can speak for him to say that when the athletic department began its search for a new head coach, they wanted to bring new energy into the program, but also wanted to find someone of great character. Not only did they find someone who checked both of those boxes, but they also found someone familiar with not just the city of Detroit, but the Titans program as well. And with that, I'm happy to introduce University of Detroit Mercy Athletic Director, Robert Vowles. Good morning. This is, is an exciting day uh, to welcome Coach Mark Montgomery to the Titan family. It's time to turn that next page of Titans basketball. I want to welcome Coach Monty, Alex, Mason, Nicholas, and Charlotte Ann to the Titan family. But along this process, and Dr. Taylor will talk to you about the process in a minute. There are a lot of people who helped us get to where we are right now. And I just want to acknowledge the people who've helped us get there. Would current and former Board of Trustees members please stand if you're here? Would the advisory committee that helped this process please stand? Or wave, raise your hand. We've got so many people that have helped us get to this point. So with our alums and donors, would you please stand? <laughs> Former student athletes, please stand. Our current student athletes, please stand. I see the men's basketball team in the back. Athletic department staff, please acknowledge yourselves. Faculty and deans, please, who are here supporting campus administration. Thank you so much. And there are a couple people who have really helped us with um, this process. 
uh, my partner in crime, uh, Coach Ochter, who did a lot of heavy lifting during this process of identifying candidates, and then we found the right candidate. So, Coach Ochter, thank you so much. I know Coach Izzo's here. Coach. Thanks for the conversations. Appreciate you. All right. So you see there was a lot of heavy lifting going on with a lot of people. And so this didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen in a vacuum. But to help us learn more about the process, I'm going to ask Dr. Taylor to come up, talk about it a little bit, and talk about Coach Montgomery. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, good morning. It's so welcome. It's great to see so many of our uh, employees, fans, and alumni, and our current and former players joining us today. Uh, and likewise, I want to welcome uh, Monty's family. It's great having Alex and the boys, Mason Nicholas, and then Charlotte Han, and who I know who's watching. I know they're excited. Um, I hope you're all as excited as I am. Um, so this process occurred over about a month's time. Uh, when we decided that the program really needed to go into a, in a new direction. And so I want to formally just thank, there were so many people that Robert alluded to that were involved. Um, the members of the advisory committee, Laval Perry, Wilbert McCormick, Terry Page, um, Gary Priestap, Dan Kennedy, Dave Fitch, Coach Kate Ochter, and Tracy Stewart. I want to thank you for your input. I want to thank Coach Kate. Uh, as Robert said, along with Robert, as well as our search firm, Collegiate Sports Associates, Craig Littlepage and Marcy Lanou did a phenomenal job, again, vetting candidates, bringing forward. There was so much interest in this job at a local, regional, and national level. In fact, the board chair, Mike McNamara, said there were probably three times the number of calls and interest in the head coaches there was when they hired a new president two years ago. <laughs> And I can t attest, being someone who's a sports junkie, my phone, I was getting texts, emails, and calls from coaches, sports agents, um, folks from, uh, you know, in, in conference offices, NCAA, where I had done work in the past, all throughout the process. Everyone had the perfect candidate that I should hire. Okay, but we had a process. We followed that. Uh, there were well over a hundred um, candidates that then ultimately CSA vetted and we ended up with uh, in our portal of more than 60 candidates, candidates the advisory committee vetted them. We ended up with nine semi-finalists that did Zoom interviews and then we ended up with uh, four finalists that um, Mike McNamara as chair of the board and myself interviewed and then Robert met and, uh, with them as well. And then, but it became very clear after interviewing the finalists that Monty was our guy. And he checked all of the boxes. And he's, by being local, knowing uh, the importance and the significance of basketball in Callahan Hall at University of Detroit, University of Detroit Mercy, and what it's meant to the community um, growing up, you know, he has a vision for the program. And we all know we have a lot of work to do. But one thing that we made very clear is that there's complete alignment between Coach Montgomery, the athletic director, the president, and the board. There are things that we need to do to make improvements to facilities. And we've, we're getting bids, quotes. There's other things that we've got to do. And we're committed to do that to field a competitive program. There's no reason that we should not be in that top tier behind Michigan and Michigan State in the, in the state of Michigan. And there's no reason why we shouldn't be competitive in a basketball league, the Horizon League, year after year and advancing to play on March Madness. Two of the alums that were first alums that I've met who, were, who have been tremendous supporters of not only athletics but the university in general uh, said to me literally within my first week, and one is here today, I won't mention her name, I don't want to embarrass her, but the two of them said, DT, can we just get to March Madness one more time while I'm on this earth? You know? And so I made, a, I made a promise to them, I'm going to do everything in my power as president to make sure that we have at least a chance to do that. 
So today is a great day. We're, there's just so much ex excitement. Same thing, my phone, uh, Robert's phone, Mike's phone all blew up right after the uh, press release went out announcing that Monty was coming home and Alex is home uh, as well. So I know what that's like to be able to, to come home and just feel the excitement of former players and our alumni, etc. You know, Monty is a proven winner, um, you know, has played at the highest level, has four years started at Michigan State, um, was all conference, and again, prepared under two of the greatest coaches in our game. Coach Izzo, who's here, Coach, J Coach Judd Heathcote, and I want to thank Coach Izzo. We had a great uh, conversation, and, and, and Coach, as usual, had great insights into what's needed for the program to be successful, and, and again, gave his support. So, so Mike, Monty, and I were all so appreciative of everything that Coach did, and it says a lot, you know, that Coach is here to support. Monty is like a son to him, and that came through really clear. And so Monty, as I was telling Coach when he did the hire, is the right person at the right time. He's one of us in the 313 zip code, and he will do it the right way. The other thing is, is I heard from a lot of folks who were interviewed about Coach Montgomery during his time playing, then two times as assistant, then during the 10 years that he was head coach at Northern Illinois University in Chicago. And as Monty knows, uh, I know a little bit about that because as I was telling his wife this morning, uh, my family, we lived in that community. We had the same area code on our personal cell phones that we've kept from 10, 15 years later. I remember the day that Monty was introduced as a head coach at NIU. That's a tough job. You're going to a football mid-major league and you're trying to recruit student athletes to an area that has a lot of challenges uh, for them. But Monty values um, values all of the values of the Jesuits and mercy that we do. I see Father Pat Kelly, you know, sports spirituality expert on Jesuits, who gave a phenomenal talk recently to the Jesuit Friends Lunch Network. Pat, you're going to love Coach Montgomery. You know, we talk about cura personalis of Jesuits, the concern and care for the personal development of the whole person. Monty gets that. He's a product of Aquinas High School. He was a two-time academic All-American. Monty shared with me during the interview, you know, it's about building relationship with players, lifelong relationships, the way he did at Michigan State. The kids graduate, there's accountability, there's excitement, you learn leadership lessons, a team, and it's about the good of the team and the good of the, and they know that they're representing the university and there's not off-court problems, okay? So again, today is a great day. It's a chance for us to hit the reset button. We know what we have to do to be successful. We've got the right coach. He's got the right vision. He's got the right plan. And we're going to make all the investment things that we need to do to allow us to be successful moving forward. I couldn't be more, ex more exciting to then have Dan introduce our next coach and to welcome Coach Montgomery back to the 313 and with the Detroit Mercy Titans. Go Titans. Thank you, DT. So, uh, just as a quick reminder, uh, after Coach Monty's remarks, we'll make him available in front of the banner over there, and then after that we can focus on one-on-one -on -one conversations. If that's something you'd like to request, you can either do that through myself or with PJ Gradowski. So now it comes the part that I know that you've been waiting for, and a chance to begin a new chapter in Detroit Mercy basketball. It is my honor to present to you the brand new head coach of men's basketball at the University of Detroit Mercy, Mark Montgomery. Congratulations. The official yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> You're tall, Dan. <laughs> Testing. Can I hold it? It's funny that uh, I told um, President Taylor and Robert Viles, um, I haven't wore a suit in so long. So right in the interview process, we're off campus. I'm walking in uh, in a suite, and all of a sudden, I have a suit on, and it seems like it's 90 degrees in there. 
So I have to get comfortable. I don't coach in suits anymore. I think I started in the MAC conference where I'm more how we are now, casual. But I want to, pre I want to thank uh, President Taylor for giving me this unbelievable opportunity to be become a head coach again. I know it was a lot of work, it was a lot of vetting. You think that month was long for you, it was extra long for me. But that vision and, and your passion and how you, you talked about your family and talked about being in Sycamore and talked about how you were a Memphis basketball junkie, that means a lot. Because a lot of times most presidents gonna get in there and talk just academics, and academics are very important, and they know nothing about basketball. I got excited when he said he's at games, he's sitting there, he's critiquing, and he knows the good basketball, and I'm gonna definitely bring an exciting style of play here. I wanna thank uh, uh, Robert Viles, the AD, for giving me this opportunity. We actually met uh, during COVID, after I got released or let go or fired or whatever you wanna say at Northern Illinois. They haven't done much since, but um, I had to get that dig in. But uh, I got a chance to meet Robert and uh, when I was on Mike Davis' staff. and It was an enjoyable three months. I want to thank the players back there. Some of those guys were on the team. Um, at that time, I think we're, we were a little under 500. And then we went on a run, and we went 12-2. and two. We lost in the, uh, the semifinals, but that gave me a chance to uh, – come in and see a basketball conference where basketball is top dog and uh, I got a gauge of the horizon lead and the different teams that we had to go against I made some trips so that kind of made it even easier when this job came open where I said you know what I want to be at a basketball school definitely back in my hometown back where I, back where I definitely have relationships and I've recruited my whole life so thanks Dr. Viles I mean Robert Viles you are a doctor to uh, uh, give me this chance and this opportunity. And I know President Taylor said, uh, Mike McNamara, he was in the room with, uh, uh, with President Taylor, and uh, I want to thank Mike McNamara. He's not here today, but uh, he, was a, he was a big supporter of mine, and I really appreciate, appreciate that. Uh, i got to get a few other thank yous out the way, and then I'm going to you know, talk about my vision and the culture that uh, I want to bring to uh, Detroit Mercy um, but I want to thank my family, um, Alex, Nicholas, Mason, um, Charlotte, she's not here today, but, uh, you know, coaching, I told her when we met, I don't know, 17 years ago, it's like a roller coaster. We're going to be in one state and we're going to be one team here and we're going to be back here and back there. And they've been along the way the whole time. And I really appreciate you guys because being a coach's wife, it's definitely not easy. Being a coach's dad, I miss a lot of things, but uh, that's my why with my family, and uh, they've been great. They will still be Spartans. Me and Alex are Spartans. Those two guys are Spartans, but now they're Titans. So let's go Titans. Uh, my mom is here today. I want to thank my mom. Um, um, she's been there, uh, of course, since day one. Big supporter. She probably remember coming down here for the Catholic League championships, and uh, uh, thank you for uh, sending me to a, a Catholic school for 12 years and giving me guidance and support and uh, helping me reach my dreams. I really appreciate that. Um, my other family, you know, uh, you know, I'm going to start. I'm going to start and work my way through. I'm going to. I want to thank. I have a few high school coaches here that, uh, like uh, President Taylor said, I went to Southgate Aquinas. I wish it was still open there. But believe it or not, Jim Perry, Phil Biondi, when we talk about relationships, this is 40 plus years. They saw me in the CYO lead in, 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 in Dearborn at uh, Sacred Heart. And uh, Jeep said that, uh, you know what, he talked to my mom, he talked to my coaches. He said, he's got to be Aquinas Raider. And that was a little harder than people think because I had my sister here, Marshall, and my brother who's in, uh, in the uh, Baltimore area. They were uh, Bishop Borges. So they were whatever they were. They had the right colors, but the wrong school. So you know what? That was 20 minutes that way, and I went 20 minutes the other way. And I'm glad I made that decision. And I thank Jim, and I, I think Phil, and uh, Ernie Price, and Mike Gladys. They were, uh, they were great. They taught me a lot of good values. They taught me about hey, working hard, taking tough, tough coaching, trust me. And then uh, it just carried me to uh, college. I know Tom Izzo's here. And I don't know if he remembers, 
but uh, he had uh, him and Judd Heathcote came. I was thinking about this the other day. We are playing in the Catholic League uh, playoffs, and we're playing U of D uh, Jesuit, believe it or not. We beat them twice during the regular season. We're the 8 o'clock game here to uh, advance to the semifinals. Uh, coach Izzo was the lead recruiter. Of course, Judd Heathcote was the head coach. It's a late game. It's 8 o'clock. We're playing U of D. All of a sudden, we jump out on U of D. I think we're up 14. I probably had, I might be embellishing, but I might have had about 26, 28 points at halftime. <laughs> Judd said, Coach, I mean, he said, Tom, let's go. I see it enough. Let's go get him. And I'm glad they left because the second half, I think we might have scored 10 points. I couldn't make a basket. U of D beat us, but Judd was already down on 96. <laughs> and, and Coach Izzo had already been on the work anyway recruiting me. But uh, that's where our relationship started um, way back then. But Coach Izzo, uh, definitely thank you for giving me the uh, opportunity after my four years at, uh, at CMU to uh, hire me back. We always said we're going to do it that way. We're going to hire former players, and uh, we're going to get that thing rolling. But the values, um, the relationship, the teach me what hard work's about, teach me about rolling up my sleeves every single day, teach me how important it is to, um, to have relationships, not just with players, but uh, with staff, with faculty, with uh, alumni. All that has carried me uh, throughout my career. And I got a supporting staff at Michigan State. You know, you just can't do it with, uh, uh, to get to this position with just one person. But uh, Kara Kay, unbelievable. John Borovich, Garrett, uh, Brinksul, A.T., T-Mac. I mean, I'm sorry, T.K., um, those guys. Woj isn't here, but uh, those guys were in the wars with me. And uh, we shared a lot of time. I'm definitely going to uh, miss them. But in every way, I've learned different things from different people on staff, especially how you, you treat people, how you run a program, how valuable everybody is in their position. And it's not just when we're at work. Off the floor, we are family. We will always be family, and you guys will always be special to me. And you can um, sign up for tickets on the way out to your right um, for season tickets here. But, um, and I, I don't want to uh, miss anyone um, but, uh, you know, you can't get to these positions without the support and without the uh, people behind you. Um, I have no cards, but I'm not great at uh, keeping to script. But uh, President Taylor mentioned a vision. I think uh, any time you start a new program or you go somewhere new, you want to learn the tradition. And the tradition is so important. And I want to tie in the past. Since I've been on the job for a week, I've been calling former players, former coaches. Um, I've been reaching out to different alumni people that uh, we have to connect the past. And the past is unbelievable tradition here at Detroit Mercy. It started with, and I'm not going to mention all the coaches, but Smokey Gaines in my office, I see he made postseason. Playing in the postseason is so important. And then, it was, of course, it was Dick Vitale. Dick Vitale got this thing rolling. He kept in-state kids home. He recruited nationally. He recruited regionally. And his excitement and energy, when you still hear him do his broadcasting, is so important. And then it was Perry Watson. Perry Watson, someone mentioned getting to the NCAA tournament. That is the number one goal, playing in the postseason, getting to the NCAA tournament. Perry got there multiple times. He played in the NIT. He graduated his players. He got the community, the alumni back engaged. That's something we definitely have to do here. And then the torch was passed to Ray McCullum. Ray um, came with the same energy, found ways to get to the tournament and, and got to the NIT tournament, graduating his players. So the winning style we have to embrace, we have to get back where it's the community. It's going to start definitely on campus. I've already, uh, I want to thank Steve uh, Kors, the uh, uh, compliance director. First guy, and I met with a lot of people my first week. We actually walked campus, and, and I was here for three months. I've never, 
Only thing I did for three months, and it was, of course it was COVID, was walk in this door, practice, walk out. But I got a chance to walk campus, and I got a chance to hear the history of campus. What building is what? You need to be Mitch here. You need to touch persons here. This is the dorms over here. And, 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 and I said uh, part of my vision is, is when you're on campus, we have to get the campus, not just the, the student body and the uh, student athletes, we have to get the faculty back engaged. We have to get the, uh, the surrounding campus, our community back engaged. If that's the high schools, if that's the AAU coaches, if that's the churches, we're gonna knock on a lot of doors and make sure we get this arena, Callahan Hall, back rocking again. So, and part of the vision, of course, it's always everyone wants a winner and a winner doesn't take overnight. It just doesn't happen, guys. We have to put in the work. We have to build the culture to, with integrity, with trust, with passion, with hard work. But I think uh, President Taylor said it. We're going to do it the right way. We're not going to cut corners. We're not going to cheat the system. We're going to do things the right way, and we're going to make sure we treat people the, white, the right way. And then in return, we're going to have a winning product on the floor. So I said it to my the team on uh, Wednesday when I got hired, it starts with, for them this semester, finishing strong academically, being eligible, but then when they come back in the summer, the hard work is gonna take on this floor to be successful. And uh, we're gonna build, definitely we're gonna build good habits. So I wanna say this, our Detroit Mercy model. This is very important. Our Detroit Mercy model has to be we're going to outwork, we're going to out-recruit, and we're going to out-prepare all of our opponents. Understand that? We're going to out-work, out-recruit, out-prepare our opponents. We're going to get out in the community, and we're going to do positive things. We're going to give back. My job, ultimately, as a head coach is to do this. Make sure our student-athletes graduate. Make sure our student-athletes reach their full potential academically, athletically, and socially. They're going to come here as young men, and they're going to leave as men. And then they're going to come back, and they're going to show their kids and their parents and their friends, this is where we got it done. This is, where, this is the gym right here. It's probably going to be renovated, but this is where we put our blood, sweat, and tears in, and we got Detroit Mercy back to where we should be at the top of the standings. Once again, I want to thank everyone for taking time, coming, we have a lot of alumni. I've already shook a lot of hands. I, I, I really, I'm really, really excited about this opportunity. Once you announce me as the head coach, we hit the ground running. And, and I'm going to keep hitting the ground running. I'm going to keep working hard. I'm going to make everybody in this gym, this community, and in this state very proud. And you are right, Dr. Taylor. Coach Izzo, big-time supporter. We're going to go to East Lansing. And maybe I could be the second coach to beat them in that gym. And we're going to bring them back here to Callahan Hall and pack this place out. Thank you. Thank you, Monty. All right, everyone. Well, wanted to thank all of you for coming today. We will, as we said, have Coach Monty available in front of the banner to our left. And then we'll have one-on-one -on -one conversations after that. We'll also have Titan fans and supporters come up for a chance to meet Coach Monty and do a few photos. But again, thank you very much for taking part of your day to allow us to celebrate our next chapter. Go Titans!